we are making history right now. We have seen some of the biggest crashes ever in the financial markets. In this video, my mission and goal is to assist you with making very informed, well thought out trading decisions and how we do not have to be scared and fearful because that is the emotions that the general public want to instill into your brains right now. Everywhere you look, whether it's in cryptocurrency and we're seeing bloody Sundays, whether it's the global market and we're seeing Black Mondays, everywhere you look, they're talking about the free fall, they're talking about the biggest drops, they're talking about the liquidations, trillions wiped out, everything right now they would want you to think is very bearish outlooked. Okay, pain and, and fear are brought across the board. But in this video, I want to show you how you can actually have confidence, how you can make profits on these moves. So I will be talking to you what I feel are the next highest probability trading setups. I do want to talk about crypto. I do want to talk and focus first and foremost on Bitcoin. Then we will start to look at some of these global markets. What is happening in Japan? Is there opportunity on gold, Nvidia, Apple? I want to talk about that and then end with looking at the altcoins because I think it's fair to say the altcoins, they're offering some very big and large opportunities right now. And that is what the main takeaway of this video is. It's the opportunities that arise on these big drops. We wanted to see a drop. I have been short. If you watched my last video, I was, exact words, I am remaining short on Bitcoin for lower prices to come. Okay, during that video, of course, warning major Bitcoin crash, I was talking about and explaining why I'm remaining in my short, why I had fully closed my longs for profit, and what was to come next. So I hope you paid attention because we have seen a big old crash to the downside from very quick $64,500, $65,000, all the way down to forty nine dollars in, in a few days. It's been pretty, pretty, pretty crazy indeed. So uh, yeah, let's analyze this together and you know, let me prepare you for what's to come next. So I want to share with you, first of all, something that I actually told my champions in the last champions live stream. And that was on Sunday. And I told them all why I felt the highest probability and what I wanted to see was a drop to take out $50,000. Actually, I want to show you very closely this prediction because you can see what I was looking for, for it to bottom out at 49,162 on this daily level daily naked point of control for the reversal bounce to the upside. This is what I felt was the highest probability, and it's what I felt was the best and most preferred trade setup for myself. Okay, so I was looking for that drop, and I not only warned the champions, of course, in the members live stream, but also over here on Twitter for free. I was explaining why after I had just finished that stream, I was coming over and telling you, oh, I want to see lower prices to come. I'm expecting this to be the next outcome, a big move to the downside, okay? We'd been recognizing this weakness, right? Following the trend, trading with the waves. That's why I fully closed that long at $65,000 for profit. And it's why I started to enter my short trades on Bitcoin. Why? Because I was following the waves. There's a lot of people that can get confused by this. A lot of people that are angered by even shorting the market. But you know, we are traders. We are here to extract profits and trade with the probabilities. Those probabilities can change from one day to the next. It all depends on the data and the analysis that we have, you know, which of course updates every single day. So I started to recognize that weakness. I took the shorts and then, yeah, the biggest prediction, of course, there shared with the champions for the exact low currently of the move. You can see there 49,162, the daily naked point of control, the daily 49,700. That one for me was the big target. You can actually see here on a lower term time frame how we hit, first of all, with a wick, perfect visual reaction off of 49,162, over an 8% bounce to the upside before coming back down for the retest, holding the higher low, retesting that daily level and getting this big pump of over 10%. So you can see each step of the way there, making our way down through supports, breaching and following the trend, which was simply lower highs and lower lows, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, off of our big support zone. And now we have not made a new high, but we did get a 15% bounce to the upside. So lovely profits to be had there. Okay, so of course, Bitcoin price in free fall as crypto market crashes. But what was the level holding us up? It was these daily naked point of controls. And that's why I always will say they are very important indeed. And that's why you have to have a marked out. So uh, yeah, so what are we looking at next then? Okay, so you can actually see now we've seen like a 15% bounce to the upside. So what can we be paying attention to here? At, currently in the UK, it is 
Yes, well, there we go. Yeah, it is two o'clock in the UK. So in 25 minutes, we will see the US stock market open. So this, of course, has also been in, in free fall along with Bitcoin. This is why I say the correlation is always very important to pay attention to. So you can see NVIDIA, Apple, some of the biggest drops of the past few days. And that does have an effect on Bitcoin. So we kind of view it like this. So the ES, the NQ, the NASDAQ, uh, the S&P 500, if there are significant drops there, Bitcoin is a correlated asset. So it generally means with a big pullback drop on the stock market, Bitcoin is also going to be pulled back with it, almost following it along. And they are very correlated assets, especially when we're seeing trillions of dollars getting wiped out of the stock market. It is going to negatively affect Bitcoin. So we are, of course, though that session did end very bullishly as we started to get into yesterday. If you see the New York Open of yesterday, we actually got big significant bounces, right? Only though to top out early morning today at the old weekly, that weekly flipping from support now into resistance. So within the next, well, 25 minutes, we got the New York Open. Please pay attention to that. I feel it's very significant to see whether EES can go on to reclaim the weekly, then for Bitcoin to look at back up towards $58,000, or whether I actually get a more bearish stock market open today on the New York, and then we'll be looking for lower retests, um, you know, back, back down on Bitcoin. So yeah, I do feel the stock market today, the New York Open, very important indeed. And also what we can be taking a look at is, you know, the global markets across the world. You know, you saw these Japanese stocks crashing. The biggest one day drops is 1987. You know, that is a very big move to the downside. But this is the thing, even with these big moves to the downside, this is the futures market here over in Japan. Just look how technical it is. That is a very big drop to the downside. Yes. But have a look where you came down to. There's nothing out of the ordinary here. The old well, no, sorry, not the old, the current weekly level at the time. And really simply this old value area low of this kind of like mini range that you had going on here will take a fixed range pull of this section of the chart. You can see how you came down to the value area low. That's where you got your daily close at the value area low. You bottomed out at the weekly and really simply the lows that were formed within that range. So in my opinion, that's a very technical level of support that was found. OK, so just analyzing, OK, I do not I do not actually trade these Japanese stocks, but I can take a look at them and recognize, OK, we are a significant support zone. So this is where, of course, opportunity arises, right? We saw a 15 percent bounce to the upside, but we have still not seen any significant trend change. But at least we can recognize what well, even over at Japan, we came down to, you know, pretty critical support, because if you do not bounce there, you're easily coming back down to around twenty five thousand next. So. Of course, this support at 30,000, very key indeed. It's the same on Bitcoin, really, right? So we analyze those together. We say to ourselves, well, 50,000, that's where we were calling for that all important support. Well, if you lose that, easy to wipe off another $10,000 from the price. So when price comes down to these massive important support levels, you do expect bounces. But have a guess, when you come down to those really important support levels, most people are scared. They are fearful. They're seeing, well, where is this going to end? They're not going to be looking for the longs. They're actually shorting at the lows in massive fear. Okay, that is not what we want to do. We want to look for the longs on these big drops. Okay, be careful. Use risk management. OK, but if you get nice entry triggers, I mean, you couldn't have seen a better one on Bitcoin. This is very, very nice entry triggers, the aggressive long, the retest. This is a conservative aggressive. You had every opportunity to take the long down there. Right. Um, and well, now you have to have a little bit of patience again. Now we're looking at another 20 minutes for the US Open. Let's see how that open goes next. But yeah, the Japanese stocks, of course, pulling back. But when I start to look at things such as gold, OK, so gold. You, you look in here, you're seeing it looks as if it looks all very bearish, right? The same on Apple and NVIDIA. But I do look at when I look at those charts, I see gold. Well, look at this overall, one of the biggest, strongest up, uptrends that we're in. Really simply, when we start to pull this as the current range that we're trading within, all we've done is back test the value area high. There is nothing bearish on that chart. Gold looking extremely bullish. It's the same really for me when I come over and I look at NVIDIA. As you all know, I've been long on NVIDIA since $3. This is a coin that I know very well indeed. Um, really simply coming back and out back testing $100. Overall, I still think this is in a strong uptrend. Overall, this is still for me buying opportunities, whether it's Apple, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's gold. These are very strong uptrends. Can uptrends change? And can they turn into downtrends? The answer is yes. But we 
as traders do not need to know when all we need to know is the probabilities of a bounce you know you see stocks crypto the like fall down to important support levels you look for the long why because you can make profits from here to here if price is then to fall down you have guaranteed yourself some profits why because you take profits so it's the same on Nvidia. Along from hundred dollars, if that put pulls up to even hundred and ten dollars before heading back down to ninety, you can take profits on that move, and you can then look for the next best trade. Okay, so that's kind of my thought process on these bigger stocks. Uh, you know, such as gold, such as Nvidia, such as Apple. They are buying opportunities, and again, of course, not financial advice, but those are what I view as long-term sort of nice swing trades. You know, you you can buy into these things, look back in a few years, and you know they're, they're probably going to be in profits. But that's kind of the way that I approach more of these stocks. Of course, when we start to move over now to the altcoins, Bitcoin, this is where you got to be in and out, in and out very quickly indeed, because these things are are moving insanely fast. I mean, for example, let's just take Pepe. Okay, big move to the downside. We're talking about in the space of 24 hours, 31% drop. And then in the space of another 24 hours, a 38% rise, you know, nearly 40%. So this is where you've got to be in and out quickly. I would not get greedy on these stocks. There are opportunities and there are profits to be had. But please do not fall into the trap of using high leverage, like I was saying over here, right? This is your daily reminder. Do not use high leverage. Do not go all in. Do not get ahead of yourself. If you've got some profits, love not going to take profit one, okay? Look for either a compound after that or look to move up your stop into profit and protect yourself. The worst thing that you can be doing right now is over leveraging, over exposing yourself. And although, yes, there are opportunities, there is no reversal confirmation yet. We've seen a very nice bounce, but we have not seen any significant market structure changes. And we have not seen any significant reclaims of resistance into support. So unless we can get back into the range value area low on Bitcoin, unless on all of these markets, really, we can start to get some significant market structure changes, which means taking out the last significant lower high. This is still at the end of the day, potentially working on once again, another lower high within the downtrend. That's why you need to exercise caution. It does not mean be fearful and scared to long, but it does mean take a little bit of care. OK, so essentially, then I want to wrap it up by looking at Bitcoin here. So where I look at Bitcoin, I'm going to be looking at more, you know, specific levels of where I feel the next best trades are. I will ask this question, by the way, please leave a comment down below. Would you enjoy me looking at the global markets, even though I do not trade the Japanese stock market? I can analyze it and give you opinions, trades, uh, outlooks. So let me know down below. Would you like me to take a look at gold more, you know, start to take a look at these individual stocks? Um, yeah, I'm very interested because I, of course, know the majority of you just love the crypto market. And that's why that's what I focus on the most. But if you're interested in the global markets, which I do feel are very important, you know, even if it's just looking at the stocks here, they have correlated markets and they do have an effect on Bitcoin. So if you'd like to me to take a look at that, let me know down below. Um, apart from that, let's move on to end with Bitcoin, right? So of course, I feel this was a wonderful opportunity and a lovely bounce has been seen from that. But what are we looking at next? Again, another 15 minutes to New York Open. I feel what happens on the stock market, very key. So please, please, please do not forget that. You can currently be aware, of course, of this more. I would call this more like the mini range that we're in. Again, we're right at the point of control. Okay, so this is neither... I would not class that as bullish or bearish being at the point of control. It's kind of what I would refer to more as a no trade. You don't want to be getting too involved at the point of control. You wait for the outer boundaries. But the weekly, absolutely key. While we're remaining below that, we can look for that retest. Get the reclaim on the weekly, on the ES. So that's where we can be looking back up towards $58,000 on Bitcoin, right? Uh, Bitcoin, of course, more intraday support. Have a look at this. The anchored view up lining up with the daily naked point of control. So we got pretty crucial support really for 52,000, right? Because if we lose 52,000, then it seems very, very likely indeed we're going to be searching down to make a new low. So I do view 52K as very important, right? I view it as very important indeed. And you can also be understanding that you have that CC Fibonacci just prior, just uh, below that coming in at 51,700. Let me add this on so you can see it more clearly. You can see this 57, 51,700, 51,400, the lower the CC, but really we're looking at around 52K. If we lose that, I would be looking towards new lows to be made and, and, and lower prices to come on Bitcoin. Okay. But while we can maintain this support, and again, a big if, 
But if we can see the reclaim of the weekly during New York session, then I would be looking for price to head back up towards $58,000 next. So this is the thing, and I will end by saying this, as traders, we do not need to know where price is going next to make profits. All we need to do is wait for high probability trade setups, which is what you exactly saw, and this is the prediction that I gave uh, to head down to $49,000. You see the reaction, we take the trades. Okay, at this point of taking the long, we did not need to know whether price was going up, which it did, or down. Why? Because we've took the trade and then it's a matter of patience. We either get invalidated, price drops, we take a loss, or it done what it done and it rise, and you obviously then can extract profits from the market. But you do not need to know what happens next to make profits. You just need to have a good trade setup with high probabilities, enter that trade, lock in a take profit one, move your stop loss up, and then you look for the next trade. So it, yeah, of course, predictions and probabilities are involved within this, but you can be wrong on your overall bias and trade. But as long as you get that take profit one locked in, you move that stop loss up, you can be technically wrong on the trade and still make profits. Okay. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I know it's been a little bit all over the shop because I wanted to cover several different things and more as an experiment video. So please leave your feedback down below. Let me know if you've enjoyed it. Of course, if you want to see more focused videos every single day of the week, which includes live trading, which includes all of the education, and you can get that via chartchampions.com, right? This is our one-stop shop for everything trading related. Trading community, trading updates, live trading, uh, education, everything that you need, chartchampions.com. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much. And yeah, 15 minutes, New York Open. I'm looking forward to it. If you want to know how I'm trading it in real time, chartchampions.com, where I will give updates in the Discord. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. It's me signing out. Goodbye.